When you're applying online at primeinc.com on your application, make sure when it asks you where you refer to by an active prime driver, make sure to click on yes. The box below that, make sure to put my driver code, Strexa. Now let's do some trucking. Oh, man. Uh, Good morning, y'all. Hope everybody slept well. All right, so I just got up. I'm over here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania at the OJ's Tank Wash. I just got done brushing my teeth. Uh, I like literally just got up. I'm still tired because I was up late doing a load of laundry, but I checked my trailer in last night uh, to get washed and I woke up this morning just to see if my trailer was done and it wasn't even moved or started, which I know I kind of got here late. I kind of figured that, but I mean, I would have think that they would, it would have been pulled in the bay. I mean, cause they open at seven o'clock in the morning it's 8 12 right now the guy last night didn't even check it in i mean he wrote it down i thought he checked it in but uh anyways they said it's gonna be done in a couple hours so i'm gonna be really pinching it for time this morning because i gotta pick up at valley proteins inc i'm supposed to be picking up some chicken fat and my appointment is between 7 a.m today and 3 p.m and it is 8 13 in the morning and let me take a look to see how let me see how far i am actually away from uh valley protein so if they can get my trailer done by like 10 30 or 11. it says i'm three hours and 38 minutes away from the shipper and i'm gonna have to go right through baltimore so i'm gonna be dealing with some traffic so yeah i'm three hours and 38 minutes away from the shipper uh, and this is going to, it's delivering to sustainable sourcing llc in clinton indiana on friday and i gotta deliver it there before uh, 6 p.m. because they actually are closed from 6 p.m. until Sunday night at let's see here yeah they're closed at 6 p.m. Friday and they don't reopen until late Sunday night yeah I'm gonna be pressing it for a little bit of, I'm gonna be pressing it for time oh yeah okay yeah, I'm still tired all right well while I'm waiting I need to check uh i need to check everything on my truck so <laughs> all right y'all so i forgot in my uh my vi uh one of my other videos i bought those three quarter inch plugs from from homies and i forgot to explain exactly why you're going to need some three quarter inch plugs now whenever you're running your in transit heat lines which are your red lines right here whenever you're running these on your trailer on both sides when you go to open up all these valves the left one and this right one right here this is a pressure relief valve. Now, every now and then, you'll pick up a trailer and you'll go to hook up your in-transit heat lines. And as soon as you go to open up these valves here, coolant will start rushing out of here. That means this pressure relief valve here is bad. That is the three quarter inch plug that you saw me pick up. You can get these at homies for like, you know, I think they're a dollar or two bucks a piece. So keep those with you at all times if you're going to be running on the tanker side and my bad i forgot to explain that in the video when i got those plugs so there you go all right let's check this oil oh shoot i'm gonna have to put some coolant in here too uh, try not to get dirty i just took a shower last night so i don't want to get all dirty all right let's check her see what she looked like Oh yeah, she looked good. Alrighty. Let me grab my coolant. I just need to put some coolant in here. Now I gotta find out which one of these uh <laughs> which one of these jugs is open. Okay, this okay, this one's open. Alright, cool. I'll put a little bit of coolant in this thing. go right there ta-da all right
these little things are a pain in the butt right here especially this, this truck's so new uh, there we go jesus christ There, let's put this back on there. Ah, ah bam, there we go. Now I just wait. Just wait for them to clean my trailer. I, I, I didn't get much sleep last night. I'm gonna have to get some extra sleep tonight for sure. But now I just gotta wait for my trailer. Snappers, snappers, snappers. Right. Uh, turn on my CB radio. Now, <clears throat> go ahead and take my take my little vitamins. I always take my vitamins every morning. Now, now it's time for me to make some cereal. <laughs> make some cereal. <laughs> now I'm just gonna uh, cut up some bananas and put it in my cereal. Get my cereal. Get my cereal on. Cut my banana. That way I can cut my banana. Okay. Spoon, some Kellogg's, uh, Special K Kellogg's uh, fruit and yogurt with some uh, bananas in it. Be pretty, pretty, pretty good. Yep, and this is my little breakfast. And then once they hook up, uh, or once they finish my trailer, I'll get hooked up to it and then start rolling. Hope y'all get a hearty, hearty breakfast. All right, all right, look at that. My trailer looks like it's done. They are dropping it right now, and I'm about to start up my truck. We're gonna go over there and hook up to her. That was smooth. All right, I got the wash ticket. Take this out of this plastic bag here. That way I can check the uh, uh, seal numbers on it. Make sure everything good. All right, let me grab my gloves. All right, now I can put some air in the trailer. All right, let's get this landing gear up. All right. 043046. All right. Now let's go up to the top. Make sure these seals match. 043111. 043111. Cool. All right. Seals match. When I dropped this trailer last night, all the lights and everything were working. But. I'm gonna go check the lights real quick. And uh, now that I'm hooked up to it, I'm gonna do my uh, pickup trailer, pickup trailer inspection real quick here. MT9059. All right, send that uh, pickup trailer inspection. All right, I didn't know if I was gonna be using the same trailer or not, so I did not write down a trailer on my trip sheet for this load that I'm running now so now I know that I'm keeping the same trailer I'll just go ahead and write down the trailer number on my trip sheet here MT 9859 all right and I gotta stop and grab fuel it'll be after I after I get let me turn this down I gotta stop and grab fuel but it'll be after I get loaded I gotta stop and get some fuel at a pilot in Hagerstown Maryland I think that's how you pronounce it. Sometimes I pronounce these uh, towns different. What? All right, all right, let's go check these lights. I'm pretty sure that these lights work, but I always like to double check because for instance, if I had an issue with, with a light, daddy just gonna do what we call borrowing parts from another prime trailer here. If something went out, keep me rolling. Of course, if I did borrow something, I always let uh, let road assist and dispatch know what's going on. Yeah, everything's good. All right. We can get up out of here. 
Well, and I backed up to this thing a little crooked, didn't I? Look, oh well, let's roll, baby. Let's roll. Rolling through Baltimore right now. I believe this is the Bay Bridge. Just beautiful. Beautiful scenery. Looks like they're doing some construction. I thought that's where I was supposed to uh, pull in over there. I've never been here before, so I have no idea where I'm supposed to be checking in at. Oh, scale house. Oh, okay, I gotta, okay, so I, I gotta stop in this. Oh, you know what? I think I've been here. I think I've been here once when I was in training. I think I was here once. All right, let me change my duty status, on duty yard movement. Let me show my, uh, let me show my arrival call here. Arrived, drop trailer, no, send that off to Prime. And once all these people check in, I would say there's two people in front of me. I think I've been here once. I'm just trying to remember exactly where I got loaded at. I don't remember where I got loaded at. All right, time to scoot up one. Make sure I don't, I don't think I'll hit any of those poles. I think I'll be just fine. I think we'll be just fine. And after this guy checks in, then I'll be next. All right, so here I just hop on the scale, and then I'm gonna go in here and check into these doors. Uh, I don't remember where I got loaded at, so I'm gonna let them know this is my first time here because I was actually in training uh, when I first came here. So let me go in here and check in. All right, so I got my weight and I got checked in. And I got my paperwork for what they're, they're gonna be loading the chicken fat. So uh, it's been a year since I've been over here. Uh, he told me where to kind of where to go he said i can go back here and uh park there should be he said there's another tanker and he said it's possible that i won't get loaded until after two o'clock when the the stylos fill up with more products so i guess what they got left all these damn seagulls over here trying to get some of these, these crumbs right now all these damn seagulls yeah they they trying to get every little bit of crumb they can oh woof. all this nasty stuff huh all right, so he said, after I get loaded, I have to pull around to the back. And they're going to wash the top of my wash the top of my trailer off. Now, did he say I was going to have to back in over here? I say it was on the other side of the stylos over here. I said, where? Oh, OK. All right, let me turn around. I'm going to turn this bad boy around here real quick. I'll go over here and give these boys my paperwork. So hopefully they, hopefully they don't say nothing to me. I don't know if they're going to say anything to me. Hey, boss. Did, did you... Okay, after this guy pull in here? Okay. I got, I got you. Hey, what's up, man? I didn't know if... Uh, this is my first time here but this is what they gave me up front and then i think he made a copy of this let me just hang out right there yeah okay appreciate it man all right so uh, yeah i told him that you know this is my first time here so because it's been over a year but uh last time i was actually here with my trainer uh over here to the left not in the bay that i walked up to but over to the left um, we actually backed up underneath that. We had to pass it and then back up underneath it. So uh, right now we're just going to sit sit and wait. All right, so this guy over here was super cool. He just came up to me as a different guy. Uh, and he said I could go ahead and pull up, pull up straight to the door. Uh, but he said it was going to be uh, 2 o'clock uh, whenever they could load me. So all right, there we go. Line it up perfect there, boys.
cool. <coughs> now, I'm just gonna sit here and, so yeah, now I'm just gonna wait and uh, over here, they're gonna load me up uh, from the top here. So I'm gonna have to go uh, line up the top of my uh, tank to this pipe that's sticking out of the ceiling over here. Currently lined up right now. Waiting for them to give me the, the go ahead that we're good. I think we're good. Now I got flies flying all up in here. So without getting your truck, you can know when your tanker's being loaded because this uh, load gauge will start going up. So they're currently loading it right now. And it'll probably stop around 38 roughly. All right, so I'm back up on the scale and I'm about to go inside that door and get my paperwork. I went inside, all they did was give me this thing here, which looks like a seal. And now he told me to pull over here to this little wash bay because I got to wash the top of my trailer off. Guess him yelling that means for me to stop all right so got my paperwork they sprayed off the top i'm loaded so i'm about to do my depart call right now with prime did i pay for loading no who loaded it the shipper the total weight is forty-five thousand five hundred forty pounds one piece and the bill of lading number is going to be order number six seven four eight one dash four zero and the seal number is going to be one zero four four two four six yes live load done send i gotta grab some fuel at the pilot travel center number 150 in hagerstown three hours and nine minutes away all right so we good we good Let's get on out of here. Oh, let me move my paperwork. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, this. Right, we're gonna be a little jiggly right here. Whoa. After 600 feet, turn right onto Lakewood Drive. All right, let's get on out of here. Leaving Valley Proteins. It wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. We got three hours and nine minutes to drive to get to this uh, fuel stop. Now turn right. 807 at night i'm on the 68 west uh, 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 getting a little tired uh, but i'm on the 68 west uh, as you can see i'm not going very fast uh, i'm going up a very steep grade right now so when you're loaded and you're going up steep grades you're not going to go very fast uh, the biggest thing, whenever you're going, you know, down steep grades, is maintaining your speed. So yeah, right now, yeah, I'm going 27 miles an hour, going up this uh, pretty steep grade. I'm about 85 miles from Highway 79. I'm going to be taking 79 North. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get to 79 to 79 North tonight. I'm gonna try to shut down. It says there's a rest area. It says there's a rest area in 54 miles. I'm hoping that they have a spot. That's the fan huh, kicking into high gear because uh, the truck starts to get pretty warm when you're going up these steep grades. So good thing I topped off my coolant Good thing I topped off my coolant this morning because my light possibly could have went on because it was low. And that would not have been fun sitting on the side of the road up a steep grade like this trying to add coolant at night. So that's why I always check my fluids in the morning. All right, turn those flashers off because we're going to start going downhill. All right. 
let's see here. Let's see what grade we're working with right here. All right. Truck, 6% grade, next three miles. Okay, so I'm doing 50 right now. And I, I don't have my foot on the gas, so I'm just going to kind of coast down just a little bit more. I'm going to get it to about 60, and now I'm going to throw the jakes on high. There we go. And then I'm going to ease into the brake. I'm going to hold it down for three seconds. One, two, three, let off. You don't want to get them brakes too hot when you're going down these steep grades or else you'll burn your brakes up and you'll be in a very bad situation. I hope I hope nobody ever has to go through that situation. I hope I don't ever have to go through that situation. So now I just slow down just a little bit more. Uh, whenever I, I'm going down these steep grades and I, I'm just easing into the brake. I'm not slamming on it, but I'm easing into it slightly firm toward the end. Hold it down for about three seconds, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. So now I'm gonna hit the brakes. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. So there we go. And my jakes are still on, and I'm just I'm just cruising down, the, down this grade right now. So I wanna keep it under, you know, 66, 67 miles an hour. I don't want it to get too high. And I don't want to get out of get out of control. I want to control the truck. I don't want the truck the truck to control me. And again, I am no expert. I'm just telling y'all as I've been trained. Two, three. There we go. My PSD trainer through Prime, Mike Tatum. Shout out to Mike Tatum. Mike, Mike. Uh, been driving for you know 15, 20 years. So you know, I was told when you're going down those steep grades, maintain your speed. Don't hold the brake down for more than three seconds. All right, now we're about to start going up, so I'm gonna let off her. There we go, see? All right, what time is it? 9.15, all right, so this is, uh, this is called trying to get a spot at 9.15 at night, a parking spot. here all right I got a safe place to spark to, uh, <laughs> a safe place to spark <laughs> a safe place to park tonight all right so now I'm gonna show myself off duty and I'm gonna do a post uh, post trip uh, post trip inspection all right there we go all right so I'm at a mandatory uh, brake check stop here off 68 West so whenever you come to these mandatory brake checks always change your Qualcomm over to uh, on duty and then I type in here in the remarks uh, brake check uh, just you know so that way it's uh, in there for DOT so you know hey I did a brake check on duty brake check all right come on there we go so now it shows that I'm on duty I put in brake check all right I'll check our brakes make sure everything looks good Make sure our brakes look good. Back ones look good. Let's check these ones down here. Okay, those look good. Now let's take a look at these ones over here. All right, those look good. Now I already did a full inspection this morning when I got up, so I did check everything. Uh, but. Yeah, we look good. Yeah, everything over here look good. Brakes look good. I already checked my front ones this morning. So we are good to go. So just always remember when you come to these mandatory brake checks that you, um, ah, shoot. Where's my seatbelt locked? Oh, okay. So yeah, you just always want to uh, make sure you show yourself on duty and then put in their brake inspection. All right, let's roll. I'm going to be pushing it for time today because 
Thank you, buddy. Uh, I'm gonna be pressing it for time today. So, because yesterday morning whenever I got up, my trailer wasn't clean because the night before when I went to check it in, they didn't properly check it in. So that put me about three hours behind waiting for my trailer to get clean when it should have been clean by the morning when I got up. And then whenever I got over to the shipper, uh, there was a driver there before me that basically got the rest of the product in the stylo. So I had to sit and wait for enough product to get in the stylo for them to make enough product to put in my trailer, enough chicken fat. So. So yeah, all right, let's roll. So I gotta get to this um, receiver by 6 p.m. because they are closed. They are closed after 6 p.m. Friday and they don't reopen till Sunday at 10 o'clock at night, which is kind of strange hours, but that's just the way this receiver is down in here in Clinton, Indiana at Sustainable Sourcing LLC when you deliver there, so. If I make it there after 6, I'm going to be sitting there or going to a truck stop until Sunday night until I can get unloaded. So I'm going to be really pressing it for time. I don't know if I'm actually going to make it there because uh, I still got to deal with a bunch of steep grades uh, up and down. So, so we'll see if I make it there before 6 today. I'm hoping I can because otherwise I'm gonna be sitting all weekend. It pays off to have a, uh, a CB radio. It can be very helpful for truckers. They're really a good thing to communicate with. Uh, about a half a mile back, somebody going, um, What's going on? Uh, two right lanes are blocked, get over to your left lane. Two right lanes are blocked, get over to your left lane. So somebody was lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, somebody uh, going east, uh, you know, gave us a heads up and said, "Anyone heading westbound, get over to your left lane because the two right lanes are blocked." So uh, it's you know it's good to have a, a CB radio kit because they can be helpful. It can be a helpful tool for you having a CB radio. So yeah, oh yeah, oh CB radio. Let me over that way. Been uh, coming handy. Comes in handy sometimes for sure. And about 65% of the other time, there's, you know, immature people making weird noises. Saying, can I get a, can I get, oh what yeah. What was that, did you say you can get off on 675 or no? Oh yeah, this oh. sign up here says two uh, right, two right lanes. Uh, there's a mini cooper uh, spun out in the middle lane. They're trying to get it to where you can get it open here shortly. Ah, mini cooper blocking the middle lane. Man, hopefully, uh, yeah, I'm really itching it for time today. Hopefully this uh, doesn't screw me over because I have to get this load delivered by six today, before six actually. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna be waiting all the way until, I'll be waiting all the way until Sunday. Man, we still. They got all these in a hurry, some bitches in the middle lane. I know they've got their radios on. Right lane through, right lane through. Get up there and just shut it down. I might not make it to the receiver. Yeah, but I see lots of flashing lights up there now that I'm coming under the last bridge here at the 675. Hell, I can't see that point. Mile ahead of me. I got a semi in the ditch. Ooh, finally, I was in that damn line for 35 minutes till I got past that damn accident. I haven't heard nothing yet. The radio don't reach to the wreck. Hey, anybody know what's going on westbound? Well, I don't know what's going on the wreck. Well, I thought I was home free and... Wreck up there. I thought I was going to make it. All right, let me turn this down here for a minute. Uh, I thought I was home free, and it looks like I was about to make it uh, to the receiver before they close at six. And now another accident. Good. So we're gonna see how long I'm gonna be in uh, sitting at this accident. So today's been uh, 
today's been eventful, we can say. Uh, he's talking with uh, with Gilbert Arenas, which is never good news. Uh, if you're if you're going down a road where you can have intelligent conversation in regards to the game, but uh, he came out talking about European players not being held to the same standards as American players. Uh, here's both those guys wanting that subject. All right, we made it here. Sustainable Source and LLC in Clinton, Indiana. The main building here is called a Lanco, but. I made it here. It's 5:32 p.m. Made it just on time. You have reached your destination. The destination is on your left. All right, I put my jacket on. It's raining. It's been raining all damn day. I'm glad I made it here before six. All right, now I got to go in here into this office, and I got to go check in. All right, so I just got uh, checked in here at the front. Uh, here they give you a, a little badge, and they'll ask you if you have a hard hat, safety glasses, and you know all that good junk, safety vest. All right, so we are going to be going to the back, and I'm going to find out if I can do a drop and hook here, because here at this receiver, sometimes they'll either live unload you, which live unload means I just stay connected to my taker and they will unload me they will unload me while I'm hooked up uh, that's what a live unload is so sometimes I'll get live unloaded and sometimes I'll be able to do a drop and hook so yeah so if they're gonna live unload me I'm gonna be getting unloaded unloaded over here to the left oh man this thing is there's oh darn it this is not gonna be fun i'm gonna have to put i'm gonna have to put my boots on i'm gonna have to put my boots on yeah i'm gonna go inside these doors and check in with them and see if uh if i'm gonna do a drop and hook or if we're gonna live unload my trailer so but here they do pump off let me go in here and check all right so nobody was in the office so I went down uh, at the end, there was no room for me to drop a loaded trailer. So I'm actually gonna drop it where they actually unload the trailers at. And then I'm gonna be swinging around to the back. I saw an empty trailer back there that I'm gonna hook up to. I'm gonna go back in the office over here one more time before I leave, cause it's, I think it's like 5.55 and they close at six. So I'm gonna go back in the office one more time and double check. Uh, but uh, otherwise I'm gonna be dropping my trailer right here because I have to drop it on concrete. Don't ever drop a loaded trailer in the gravel. Like this gravel don't ever drop a loaded trailer in that Since, all right, since I'm dropping a preloaded trailer here, there's nobody here, I can do a drop. I can do a drop and hook. So this is a copy of the uh, scale ticket, the bill of lading, and this is a certificate of analysis and then a, a wash ticket. So since the shipper gave me two of everything, I'm gonna keep uh, the, the um, scale ticket a bill of lading and a copy of the wash ticket and I'm gonna send that through Prime so this is gonna be their paperwork I don't know if y'all can see over here but right there that's a black mailbox that's where I'm gonna put the paperwork at right inside of there after I drop this trailer whenever you're dropping a loaded trailer always make sure to press the button and drop your bags before you get out from underneath it so before I pull out from underneath this trailer I'm gonna go ahead and press this button right here to lower my height suspension which is my airbags I see it's beeping and on your load gauge you see the load gauge is going down all the weight and then here in just a second I'm gonna get out from underneath it and I'm gonna go hook up to an empty dirty trailer and I'll be submitting my paperwork that I got my uh, trip sheet bill of lading scale ticket and a wash ticket and then uh, and then this load is done thank you so much for checking out my video make sure to give me that thumbs up smack that subscribe button and let's keep on trucking y'all